This episode is an attempt to interpret this work by Johann Sebastian Bach with modules. Not in the easy way, which is to download a MIDI from the score and simply play it. The idea is to see the patterns behind the composition and try to replicate it in a modular fashion. Then we can apply these rules in other patches and maybe learn something in the process. First, we search for the chord progression and try to recreate it with a sequencer. There is something that can be useful in many cases. We send a constant voltage to a meter and also to a parameter that we want to control. So we can know what's the voltage needed for every option and write it down on paper. We set AS16 step sake to one step to get a constant voltage. We want to know the voltages for the position and shape of our J modules chord. Then the same principle for the chord shapes. Many chords are inverted, so the bass notes are different from its root. We will use the third row for that. The chord module has four outputs for the notes of the chord the root, the third, the fifth and the seventh. The octaves module is used to assign notes on different you know, octaves. Bogodio's 8 colon 1 serves to switch between the notes of the arpeggio. Maybe Wendy Carlos was referring to this when she made switched on Bach. Just a joke. And Asef plays the piano sound font. So we link the output of the third row to the first step of the switcher. Then we follow the arpeggio, linking the third note from chord to the second input of the switcher. And we send quarter notes from the clock to move it. The next step of the arpeggio is the fifth note. And the next one the octave of the root. the third, one octave up. The complete arpeggio is made of a group of five notes. The bass, the third, the fifth, the octave and the third. Then the last three notes again. Now is time to fill the values in the sequencer for the harmony. Every chord is played twice, so the sequencer has to be moved one step every two turns of the arpeggio. That means 2 times 8 or 16 quarter notes. We have to put the values we got before. The second chord is D minor, so in the first row goes the root for position in chord. The second row is for the shape and the third is for the bass, in this case in the form of one voltage per octave. The same applies to all 16 steps. Don't forget to link the reset to both the sequencer and the switcher, like I did. Now we can hear the result.
There's a stereo sample played to draw the Bach's portrait you see in the scope. What if we play his prelude with the sound of his portrait? This is weird. Or maybe an 8-bit version. We didn't want to offend the memory of Johann Sebastian. Perhaps he was the best musician in the history of mankind. We hope we haven't bored you. See you in the next video.